Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you well, are. Welcome back to the Red Pill Religion channel. This is another of our Escaping Atheism videos. As a reminder on Red Pill Religion, we are not a Christian group. This is a secular effort where people of multiple religions are on the team, including uh, some atheists who support us because they see exactly what we're talking about, how toxic, malevolent, new, basically what you might call new atheism is on the culture. Um, please give us a, and we also talk about subjects other than atheism, including men's issues, which we're going to be talking about a lot more since the anti-feminist atheist brigade is increasingly just useless. I, again, am Max. Joining me here today, as usual, uh, we're on a deflating escaping atheism. We got uh, escaping atheism, or deflating atheism. How you doing, man? All right, man. All right. Now, today we're going to actually try something new. Under the increasingly uh, obvious truism that I think more and more people who are religious, who are not religious but are spiritual and not religion hostile and religion ignorant, um, for those people, you should take the attitude that no atheist is worth more than two minutes of your time. In fact, we get requests all the time to do response videos to various atheist stupidity because the amount of atheist stupid out there is monumental and it's very comparable to the stupid levels of feminism. In fact, most atheists in their heart are really just Steve Shives, pretty much all of them, including the <laughs> guys we're talking about here, the guys we'll be talking about here, especially Sargon. Uh, but just remember, we're we're not affiliated with any particular religion, and anybody calls us Christian apologists, they're lying to you. Uh, now, I have a shout out to Godless Cranium, who I am still not going to get to this week because we're going to be picking on Sargon again. Instead, I think he's more important because he's more dangerous, and you know, he's more dangerous and more vile uh, than 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 Godless Cranium. Uh, nevertheless, Godless Cranium has been rather uh, dishonest lately, um, which actually he always has been. So I have a message for him that hopefully his followers will, uh, you know, will take ho home. First off, as I've mentioned before, and it's not disputable, belief in the supernatural is normal, healthy, rational, and evidence-based. Everybody should know that. Now, Godless recently made another video where he whines and plays the victim again, and claims I've said I wouldn't protect his free speech rights, and that I'm against his free speech rights. Now, I've explained this to him more than once already in writing. He has no excuse not to know it. I said, I said something like that to him one time, and then I immediately said, yes, but I, but I corrected myself, and I've corrected myself several times. What I was trying to do is what I'm still trying to get you to do, and I do not think you will do, Godless Cranium, is this. You have been asked to tell us why. I or anyone else would defend your free speech rights. I didn't say I wouldn't defend them, unless you're going to keep dishonestly quoting one thing out of context that's been corrected over and over for you. Yes, I would defend your free speech rights. I just want to know why. Should I? You truly are an abusive bigot, like most of your atheist co-religionists. You will not correct misinformation you put out, especially in your misleading straw manning of religion that you do all day on most of your videos. You spread ignorant hatred of religious people and, and with your self-righteous, smug, condescending attitude toward them and your pig ignorance about them. And one of the things that, you know, I have to know when I'm talking with someone like you is you can't back down because you might have your income and your reputation destroyed if you ever had to admit that you routinely are dishonest about religion in the way you straw man it, mock it, etc. So given all this and given the reality that uh, YouTube atheists were involved in activities to drive decent Christians offline, on YouTube, and that went on for years, and no one in the atheist community will, will, will admit to it. I can get you multiple eyewitnesses to that kind of thing. Deplatforming harassment. Christians haven't been welcome on YouTube for a very long time, either by YouTube management or by the atheist skeptic thugs who go around harassing them. Now, why, now, if you wouldn't stand up against that, why would I defend you when you're in trouble now? What is the reason? Do you think I owe it to you? I mean, I really will defend your free speech rights, but I just, I'm stunned that you can't answer why I should, given how horrible you are. Can you do it at all without 
without invoking my religious values? Do you think you have a God-given right to my protection? Do I have a God-given right to yours? Can I count on yours? When YouTube or, so, or some of your fellow atheists eventually try to get this channel shut down, which has happened on more than one occasion, they'll probably eventually succeed, although I'm praying they won't. If I get shut down, will you stand up and defend me even though you don't like me? Will you stand up, you know, stand by those words, I'll, I'll defend, you know, I, I, don't, I may hate what you say, but I'll fight for the death of the right to say it? Yeah, do, do you believe that? Great. Well, I'm telling you right now, I don't like you, I don't respect you, and I don't respect your viewers, and I don't respect your fans, and your commenters are a bunch of sewer rats. They're horrible people. Now, given that I just said that about you, and I mean it, you're less worse than most of the atheists out there, but you're still horrible, as are your horrible fans. The question stands, now will you still stand for my free speech rights? Do you mean it? Because I'm looking at you and saying, I don't like you, and I expect you to defend my rights anyway. And you know why I'm saying that? Because I don't like you at all, and I would defend your free speech rights and step up for you. I don't believe anybody in your godless community would do so. Now answer that, and have your swine hateful fans answer it too. I dare them. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> maybe, maybe yeah, more. Out of high dungeon. It, it sounds it. like it, it I sounds enjoyed like, it. Oh, it. He's mining that for cheap outrage, the same way logic uh, mined my uh, cockroaches comments. Well, yeah. Well, that gets me back to a few quick memes I want to put out. This is something I want to see not just Christians, by the way, but people of every religion start doing to atheists. Stop when when atheists tell you to shut up or try and tell you you're quiet to be quiet. Say no. They don't have a right to control or monopolize the conversation or act like they are the default arbiters of reality. Ditto, if they get offended, I quote again the great atheist scholar, Christopher Hitchens. If someone tells me I've hurt their feelings, I say, I'm still waiting to hear what your point is. Okay, so this is an atheist hero I'm invoking. Here's another one. Are you offended? It's very common to say you're offended. I have, you know, like, like that gives you some rights. Well, so fucking what if you're offended? Again, I quote a great atheist hero. Again, more high dudgeon. I enjoy it. I deserve it because I'm right about everything I just said. <laughs> oh. the, the irony uh, of, those, of those quotations is that in 2017, uh, uh, atheists are the most butthurt snowflakes there are. And that they're just triggered just by the sight of, of people expressing their religious faith. And they want, they want it eliminated from the culture just because it upsets them so much. Oh, yeah. Yeah, too bad, Snowflake. Most people believe in God in the U.S., in Canada, in Australia, in the United Kingdom, in most of the world. Most people believe in God, the supernatural, the spiritual. And uh, atheists are very much a minority and not a growing one. Yeah. Now, let's get to a couple of response videos. By the way, I just want to say to Stephen Fry, yeah, I, I have to say, I don't think we're going to have time to do a, a genetically cloned skeptic. But I just want to say to Stephen Fry, yeah, get up on the comedy stage, uh, talk shit about Christianity. You will have an audience of people applauding like seals. So you don't get to claim that you are you are just offending people and that you, you're just uh, uh, you're the iconoclast the, and, and the gadfly. Because when you, when you say uh, horrible things about Christianity, you're actually pandering to your audience. You are. In fact, in Stephen Fry's case, it's particularly odious because the main way he started was by attacking the Catholic Church, which uh, among the posh, toffee-nosed, uh, bigoted, swine, fop crowd that Stephen Fry <laughs> runs in, he's an odious, obnoxious man and rightly disliked. Um, but you know, I'm I'm using his, my, him as my hero here. What a nasty bop! Um, the, in in the UK, among the English, uh, what can be observed about the English is that when a uh, an Englishman who's who's who has nothing particularly interesting to say, and just wants to sound smart, he always does one of two things: he slags off on the French or he slags off on the Catholic Church. Anti-Catholic bigotry is pretty common in the UK, especially in England. And some of that, you know, I had used to think most of that had gone away. And actually it's, but, but, but it hasn't. Instead, the atheist set has just taken it. Speaking of which, uh, we have this one. Atheist activists murder suicide. 
uh, a short one with Sargon of Akkad. And by the way, I do think we're going to get to genetically modified because I'm not going to spend more than five, ten minutes on Sargon. And I'm not going to listen to more than about two minutes of his self-serving tripe either. Uh, here's the video. I'll make sure we have links in the low bar to everything when we're done. We're going to look at a few very short segments of this. See, what's happened is there's been another atheist murder. And atheists are butter hurt that anybody would even mention the fact that he was an atheist. Um, but too bad, it's totally relevant. Every time an atheist involved, is involved in a killing, the public has a right to know. Yes. Um, just as we have the right to know when Muslims commit killings, when Christians commit killings, we need to know when atheists commit killings. And I'll give you a few reasons why. But let's, 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 pause, let's play about a minute here. Let me double check my notes. Uh, the first 29 seconds, let's look at Mr. Smug Bigot uh, Englishman and what he's got to defend his ideology with. So you can imagine this one's fairly controversial, although I don't really see what the problem is from the position of his atheist activism, which seems to be the contentious thing that people are talking about. Atheist activist kills wife and himself in suspected murder-suicide. Scott Smith, a military veteran and atheist activist, has reportedly killed himself and his wife, who is planning to file for divorce. Doesn't really seem to have much to do with his atheism, does it? You'd like to think so, but I beg to differ, as we have ample evidence that his atheism may have had something to do with it. From science and from common sense and logic, Let's let me know. I'll also link these in the low bar. We got a lot of Bart Hurt and shrieking rage a few months ago when we put up this skeptic feminist thunderfoot and atheist violence. I've got it linked here on on uh, uh, Deflating Atheism's page. It's also mirrored on ours, one of ours. Uh, as we discussed there, there's every reason to think the skeptic feminist murder case was was due to the atheism. We discuss it and, and, and analyze it why in that video. I doubt, I, you know, we still haven't had any rational response, of course. Uh, we also, you know, this isn't the only one. There was that Tennessee church shooting where, where the press did everything it could to cover up the atheist who did that church shooting down in uh, Kirkland. Was it Kirkland, Texas? Or uh, Tennessee? So I don't know. We've seen multiple cases where people who were hanging out in atheist forums mop, went out and shot up churches. And that's because, as we've shown many times, atheism is a hate movement which Sargon here is part of, actually. He came up out of the New Atheism, and that was always a hate movement. Um, hating on Christians eventually gets people hating Christians and wanting to hurt them. Same for every other religion. Yes. Okay. By the way, how do I sound? How do I sound? You sound fine, man. I hear you just fine. In fact, you're less booming than normal, so it's good. All right, now I get another 47 seconds to play, so let's, let's, let's hear that. Because I, actually, he says some things nice here. But I almost give him a pass for, but not entirely. Here we go. And a lot of people said, yeah, well, feminists and perverts and rapists and child molesters and all this sort of thing. Uh, I don't think feminism is something that encourages that, just to be clear. I don't think feminism actually wants people to molest other people. In fact, I think feminism goes to quite extreme lengths to try and prevent that. Yes, to and the no. point where it's definitely a case of overcompensating for those male feminist activists who embrace it as they do but feminism itself isn't responsible for it in the same way that i don't think catholicism is actually responsible for the, the rape of young boys i think that people who are likely and prone to doing that sort of thing will find themselves attracted to catholicism to cover up their urges and it's the same with male feminists they attract okay that was halfway reasonable. Um, he's been one of the most viciously nasty person towards uh, Catholics and the Catholic Church uh, on YouTube for quite some time. Um, and, and he deserves to be treated with contempt by any Catholic in the UK who meets him because he's a horrible man in general. But he says something sort of self-servingly nice here. But what I've noticed lately is that the atheist community has, including some of the skeevy slime that, that swirl around Sargon, um, are what I would call fake Catholics. They, they've they either been trained in the atheist, because the, the atheist forums now will train you how to pretend to be Catholic, or they'll take somebody who was born Catholic but was never religiously serious, and then they'll feed them specific anti-Catholic lines. I ran into one of those thugs on Twitter, and he actually, he threatened to, 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 to punch one of the volunteers from uh, our Red Pill Religion Squad, he threatened to punch Buckley for mo mockingly making a joke out of, on his integrity. 
Um, it, but atheists get violent a lot. It's not the first time we've got threats of violence from atheists. They apparently defend their, their integrity by threatening to punch you if you say they don't have any. Um, regardless, he's got fake Catholics in his orbit, and these fake Catholics are very odious and very obnoxious. They're glib and they're trained and still go out of their way to make the Catholic face look stupid and retarded. I do not represent it honestly in any way, shape, or form, and I do not think uh, Mr. Benjamin, I'm sorry, Sargon here, would ever dare talk to a really smart one. Um, so I kind of appreciate that. More to the point, I want to get to, and we'll start at about the 210 mark here. The, the, some, By the some way, I, I think it's should note uh, about his thing about pedophiles seeking out Catholics. That doesn't make sense. I mean, I think oh, what no, he... No, 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 no. He, he was actually being nice there, and he says, I don't think pedophiles seek out Catholicism. Yeah. Uh, he was actually kind of being nice there, but I, I could only give him a... He's doing it in a self-serving way, and he has so many nasty fake Catholics around him, I, I don't give him that much pass. But he's right. No, people don't. But it's he's not entirely right that pedos... Uh, don't seek out Catholicism. He should have um, said the priesthood, yeah. but even then, even then, uh, he's kind of he's kind of relying on this assumption that there's this there there's this overabundance of pedophiles in the priesthood, which is not the case. No, and has never been the case. But it, it, it has never been the case. In fact, here's what we know, and I would love to see him for once have some of the integrity he likes to pretend to. Now he didn't threaten to punch me, but I don't think Sargon's got any integrity either. I really don't. Um, but if he had any integrity, he might have even mentioned that statistically, at the height of the Catholic Church sex abuse scandal, a Catholic priest was less likely to molest a child than the average man on the street was. Yes. That's at the height of the scandal. And at this point, it's been tightened up so much. You're safer in the presence of a Catholic priest or in a Catholic church than you are in any secular government school or juvenile facility. Um, so the Catholic pedo thing, it would be nice if someone in the atheist community would step up and say, you know what, the Catholic pedo thing is not funny anymore. Yeah. Um, it's not okay to be that nasty to people. Catholic priests get beat up now for being Catholic priests. And by the way, I've known atheists who laugh and say that's funny, which is just another reason not to like atheists very much. Anyway, let's get to something a little more uncomfortable here, uh, on the same riff. A military veteran whose wife was on the verge of divorcing him, doing something crazy. So I don't see this as being anything of particular interest, to be honest. In the same way that I mean, Russian Deadpool, like laughing at him for being a murderer of a woman, is not a commentary on feminism. It's a commentary on Russian Deadpool. And it's a commentary on atheism, as I mentioned before. Because as we did in the, as we show, talked about in the video, Rob and I did that with that a few months ago. It is very safe to assume that atheism and skepticism were directly involved, uh, were directly uh, a part of why the skeptic feminist killing happened. Because when you take relatively low IQ people and you tell them that there is no ultimate morality, and that yeah. being skeptical of things makes makes you intelligent, which makes you able to be skeptical of anything you want. You decide you are the moral arbiter of truth in all things, and that you can skeptic away any thoughts you don't like. And this is this is a reality that you know, the, the, ideologically, atheism is ideological. Atheism, when it tells you that there are no moral standards, there are no more ethics, it's why I often say, even though it pisses them off, atheists have no morals; they have no ethics. Well, they don't. And in point of fact, I'll, I'll point out one of the better resources on here, Conservapedia. Now, what, what, what trained atheists like to do is say um, uh, is that you can dismiss this because it's Conservapedia, because there's got some procreationist stuff on here. Um, but you know what? That's a, that's a cheap excuse to get out of talking about something. The reality is most Christians are not creationists, at least certainly not in the young earth creationist sense. And actually, even in the old earth creationist sense, most of us aren't. And all these little arguments over intelligent design are all squabbles between minority opinions. Um, the majority of Christians, including Catholics, have never had a big conflict with creationism. At, with, with, with evolution or the 14 billion year old, from pretty much from the beginning. Um, we won't declare these things dogmas of the church, but they're, they're just not important to anybody except fringe atheists and certain types of Christians. 
Yes, you'll find Catholic creationists, but they were always a minority. And you know what? They were never a threat to the sciences. Um, yeah. And they're still a minority. And by the way, a majority of Nobel Prize winning physicists are Christians. So you can stop pretending that religion is getting in your way. Go to the Conservapedia web pages and start looking at the references. And I will also give, because uh, I know the authors of these pages, and one of them's a creationist and one of them's not. Um, their references are first rate, and they've been doing this for years and tackling it for years. And they're all references you can check for yourself, so you can check for your own uh, your own biases. You should also read a book by Vox Day called The Irrational Atheist, which I've recommended before, even though I would consider him a heretic. The information here, here is just two choice. The New Atheist Cult Movement, you know, that started with the Dawkins and Hitchens and all that. It's a fraudulent movement with fraudulent statistics and fraudulent science and fraudulent history. In reality, despite what you've been told, atheists are more likely to go to jail for violent crimes, such as rape and murder. They are more likely to commit suicide. They're more likely to, be, in fact, while, while the atheist honey badger brigade likes to talk about the male suicide rate being about eight to ten times higher than the female suicide rate, you know what? The atheist suicide rate is about eight times higher <laughs> than, 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 than the non-atheist population. Um, it, uh, atheism corresponds with drug addiction. It corresponds with broken homes. It corresponds with, with divorce. In point of, uh, and they're more likely to go to jail. It also correlates with being male, so that they're... It does correlate with being male. In fact, authentic female atheists scientifically are very rare, and they tend to be really nuts. You'll find a sane one now and then when she's, like, young in college age or something like that. But I'll tell you, look at a woman who gets much older than that. If she's still an atheist, she's nuts. <laughs> uh, I, they t I've said it before, but I, you see it. Uh, atheist women tend to be bony pill poppers or fat alcoholics. And I'm sorry if that, that offends you for saying that, but that's what I see. Sure, there's exceptions. And they're all neurotic. My God, just look at the atheist women on YouTube. Find me one that's a model of sanity. Maybe Godless Mom, maybe, although she's, oh, Lord. Um, did, I, did I ever tell you I actually got accosted IRL by, by a woman who had seen the cockroach clip? She was shrieking I, at me. I, I, I can't what, what cockroach clip? No, the, the logic when he, when he, when he took a, a, the, the quote where I said I, I, I almost think of atheists like cockroaches to be stamped out. Oh right yeah, they ran the quote out of context. And yeah. when you even correct and clarify, they won't even let you correct and clarify. It's like, oh, you said certain, a certain thing one time, one way that I didn't like, and now you've got to yeah. live with those words forever. It's like they're 12 years old or something. Yeah, and and they mine it for cheap outrage. And in, in any case, uh, this woman uh, accosted me in real life. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, and here's the last thing I'm going to say. And then actually, I think we're going to move on because we spent enough time on Carl here. Uh, 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 I'm sorry. I, I, someone will probably say I doxed him. I didn't mean to do that. I've, it's just I've known his name for a long time. It's not a secret. But he prefers to go by Sargon. I respect that. Um, um, we have been in hangouts together. He probably doesn't remember. He's probably sloshed. But in any case, uh, moving on, uh, I, I do want to say that Sargon seems to have moderated somewhat, but not really. Those creepy fake Catholics around you uh, really, really suck and give real Catholics no reason to respect them or you. Just so you know, mate. You now, know what it would sound like uh, I want to actually like wrap ideas. up. Uh, we still have time. I want to go ahead and do if atheists argued like theists. I think we probably won't finish it. No, Although if we really no, want to, we can come back. Yeah, this well, we had a lot in this episode. So uh, how about we do, uh, because uh, uh, as as you're aware, uh, 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 Sargon is kind of a favorite of Max here, and, and genetically cloned skeptic is a favorite of mine. So so you know you know who suggested what here. But I, I do think it's deserving. We've got another. We've got up to twenty, thirty minutes. We can still play with logic. Okay, okay, okay. We really do. We can do. We we may get all of it done. We may get halfway through. Um, I'll just introduce, and I'm going to let you do most of the talking. Um, I'm going to say it, this is if, if atheists talk like theists, and I, I'll just say my short take on this is that a few times, you know, he does. He, first off, he res, uh, puts the dumbest Christian arguments or the, the dumbest religious arguments next to some of the smarter ones. 
and and you know, some of his responses I would say are not that bad, but it's yeah. all still mostly smarmy, snotty, shallow. Makes it clear he's never really tried to talk to someone who's on his level, who's not trying to. Uh, you know, he, you know, someone. I don't think he would do it. Most of these guys aren't. They're professional and they need to stay atheist to keep their income where it is. Yes. Um, but let's go ahead. He has like I don't know, it's like three hundred snotty responses where he supposedly flips around standard religious remarks. Yeah, and well, let's, let me say this is kind of his his mo is that is that he uh, he he's a big fan of basically straw manning the Christian religion. And uh, I don't know, we we did a video about him before, and uh, if you remember, there was a point at which uh, genetic I call him genetically cloned skeptic, even though his name is genetically modified skeptic because he's basically a clone of all other skeptics on on the internet. But uh, there was a point at which he said. Unlike though, effectually, he said, he said, unlike those stupid Christian people, uh, I'm not afraid to say when I don't know the answer to a question. I don't just arbitrarily plug in God as an answer uh, to questions I don't know. And we laughed at him. And right. so uh, another YouTube. That's the kind of straw manning he does of religious yes. people. He has no real respect for intelligent res re religious people. What he does, and I'm seeing this increasingly commonly too, is he just comes up with glib responses to what are otherwise possibly deep answers. Because again, you got to keep that atheist rep going and pretend you're smarter than everybody else. Yeah. Now, I believe he's also the guy who, said, who has said in previous videos, well, this video may offend you, but I hope you're offended. It's good if you're offended. It makes you think, great. Yeah. So I did say that to him and everybody else. I hope you're offended by what we're doing here. Maybe it will make you think for once, because it doesn't seem like you ever really have. Sorry, got Rob. Go ahead. Oh no, no, no. Uh, I, I I know who you're talking about. It's like I, I tr no. It's Aaron Ra. It's he, he, oh no. See he, that, he actually that, puts Christians to actually talk to him, but you'll see in the description I attempt to reason with them. It's like yeah. why, why are Christians even taking the bait when this guy is so prejudiced that he would okay. say I attempt to reason with them. Let's get a, let's let's go ahead and get to his snotty, uh, shallow commentary um, where he attempts to, you know, flip the. I, I, I just want to preface this about about what he says. Uh, I, I unlike unlike those Christians, I'm not afraid to say when I don't know. There's another YouTube user of the name Steve McRae uh, of the Great Debate Community. Oh yeah, that jerk. He and the guy's a snake. The guy's a liar. Oh, yeah. He's a backstabber. I know there are Christians like Wayne Fillmore who try to get keep on good terms with him, but the guy's a snake. Anyway, oh. he watched the video with with uh, with a genetically a clone skeptic here of our response, and he actually interpreted it, our laughing at genetically clone skeptic to mean that we were mocking the fact that he doesn't know everything. Oh, and like, Lord. Unlike, unlike us. Uh, because we just have God, and that just answers all our questions. He thought we were we were making fun of him for admitting he doesn't have all the answers. So yeah, yes. professional skeptics are all alike. Yeah, Stephen they really Gray are. So go ahead. He's garbage. Uh, no, yeah. I just wanted to say, by the way, that uh, yeah. Oh man, now I forgot what I was going to say. Oh, these people, you should stop giving them the skeptic label. These people are paid to be skeptics, and guess what? You can be skeptical of anything or anyone or at any time for any reason. Get skeptical of them. They make cash trying to convert you to atheism, um, and they 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 make uh, they, they're hideous bigots towards religious people while doing it. They don't deserve your respect. And, and they are totally oh, 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 now I remember what I was going to say. Then we're going to really have to play this, and we're not going to get out of here. Um, I wanted to say uh, that he, too, has used that I hope I've offended you line. One of the markers of the Atheism Cult Network, because it is a cult, and everybody we just named is part of that cult network, one of their standing lines is, I hope I've offended you. It's good if people get offended. It makes them think. So, again... Uh, it's a standard line for these people. It's one of their talking points. It's one of their identifiable lines. They have a lot of identifiable lines. That's one of them. Uh, so we hope you're offended here because you're, <laughs> you know, you deserve to be offended. You're awful. All right, let's let's. I'm going to let Rob do most of the talking from here on out. I'm going to try and stop after everyone until we get too tired. Yeah. Here we go. I wonder what it would sound like if atheists started arguing like theists. I know God isn't real because I've experienced his non-existence personally. Okay. Uh, 
again, the thing with these comments for the most part is that they're kind of take it or leave it comments if, if it's coming from a Christian. So at least it's coherent coming from a Christian. It's it's like you and I both do not lightly take uh, uh, the whole immediate apprehension of God's existence. That is a very valid way of knowing God. Is it, yes, I, I I just know God. God exists. I can feel as I, I can feel his presence. That's perfectly valid. Uh, I think you'll exactly agree. Valid, yes. I think you'll agree with me. However, uh, if someone's not convinced by our uh, immediate apprehension of, of God's existence, hey, that's fire. I could, I could totally understand why that's not convincing to you. Yeah, I, uh, I, in fact, I, I'll even give him this. I'm not sure he's had this, but when I was an atheist, I had these suck hole pits of nihilist where, where, nihilism where I experienced a complete inability or lack of awareness of God. Um, and I was stuck in that for a long time. It really sucks. Yeah. You wind up in this little materialist box, and it's very unpleasant. It's not normal biologically to be atheist, and it's not particularly rational to be atheist either. It's certainly not evidence-based. Um, so no, a person's only evidence is they say, I can feel God's presence. Good, because that's pretty universal in humans and totally yeah. normal. And since it's a rational thing to think otherwise, you have no reason to dismiss that. But I have felt the, the, the lack of God's presence. It's, it's usually hideously painful and gets more painful year after year. Uh, often they get soothed by atheists with drugs and sex and porn and losing yourself and other hedonistic pursuits. Just an observation. Just an observation. Okay, so let's keep well, going. Yeah, but this is the thing. Is, if God, is, if God is, is making himself known to you, at least that is a coherent concept. Yep. You can't flip that on its head and make something that is non-existent, make its non-existence known to you. That doesn't make sense. That's not even coherent. So it, it's that's kind of the template of these things, is that they're kind of take it or leave it comments when they're coming from a Christian, but they're not even coherent. They don't even make sense when, when you try to invert them. All right, let's try some more. You can't prove God doesn't not exist. Just... Uh, okay. Yeah. Well, I mean, okay. Yeah, I don't even know what to say to that one. Uh, I, I'm actually, I'm actually uh, not an advocate of either. You can prove God does the uh, does exist, or you can prove God doesn't exist. I think in principle you can prove both. But yeah, we'll continue. Yeah, there, in principle, there's ways you can do both. Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Look at the mountains. Look at the trees. It's just so obvious. The heavens declare the glory of the laws of physics. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. No, no, no. Wait a minute. God is what's running the laws of physics. Yes. And we thought that for thousands of years and not just Christians. So God's oh, running the laws of physics. You get that, right? Okay, go ahead, Rob. So stupid. It's like, it's like he, he's trying to introduce this, this art, completely artificial uh, opposition of Christianity and science. Hey, get this, yeah. get this through your head, numbskull. Uh, Christians believe in the laws of physics, too. So that's, that's a complete non sequitur. Indeed, and, the majority of Nobel Prize winning physicists alive today are Christians with other re religions represented. And that, by the way, is because if you believe in a prime mover, i.e. you believe in a god, it actually makes theoretical physics make a lot more sense and open up, opens up new areas of, ex of exploration. This is probably why, by the way, as smart as he seems to be, Stephen Hawking still doesn't have a Nobel Prize, but multiple Christians smarter than him do. So. Anyway, keep going. Just trust that God doesn't exist and reality will reveal itself to you. The Who, whoever says, huh? Well, no, he, what he's parodying is, is just believe in God and God will reveal himself to you. Again, There's take it or leave it, but it, does, it doesn't make sense uh, for something that doesn't exist to reveal its non-existence to you. That doesn't make sense at all. Yeah, you've got to assume the non-existence of God, which is, by the way, atheism is a uh, an ideological position. You've got to assume God's non-existence. You certainly can't prove it. Um, so, <laughs> whatever. Let's keep going. Human eye is just too complex to have been created. It must have evolved over millions of years through natural processes. I yeah, okay, that's that's going back with the creationists again. Uh, I hate atheist obsession with creationism since a majority of Christians and certainly a majority of those who've gone through science courses don't have a big problem with creationism. 
Uh, they they, they just don't believe in it. They don't believe in it. They don't believe in it. And of the Christians who do believe in creationism, some of them are still really smart and good at their jobs. I talked to a physicist who is a creationist, which again is a minority position among Christians. And he was smart as a whip on theoretical physics and had many patents in his name. Uh, really, uh, the obsession with creationism is one of the trademarks of the atheism cult network. Almost nobody's interested in that except certain type of Christian and, 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 and ideological atheist. Almost nobody else gives a rat's ass. I thought you were going to let me have this, Max. <laughs> I apologize. Go ahead, man. Well, no, I mean, you don't, you don't have to be a creationist to believe in design. But again, what, what he says makes no sense. Uh, something's not so complex that it seems that it must have not been designed. That doesn't make any sense at all. No. In fact, the entire universe looks designed. Yes. All right. Let's keep going. I personally don't want to live in a world where God does not exist. Well, okay, there's a lot of atheists who feel that way because they hate God. Well, um, yeah, that's, that's a statement of fact. If someone's expressing their opinion, I mean, you can't, you can't fault them for that. Yeah, I mean, I'm not saying every atheist hates God. I, some atheists are just clueless materialists. But a whole lot of them do hate God, and it's obviously what motivates a lot of them, or they wouldn't be so hateful to religious people. Why be hateful to religious people? Unless you hate religion, the idea of God. Just curious. I belong to the in group, yeah. Yeah, there we go. All right, I, I, I am going to shut up now and just let you talk, I swear. I wouldn't lie to you. God doesn't exist. I know God isn't real because reality speaks to me. Not okay, like again, same thing. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense for, first off, Christians believe in reality too. In fact, we, we actually have a coherent concept of reality. Yep. But, uh, if yeah, we think something intelligent is running the universe, why do you think we're wrong? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, I mean, if you're going to have uh, something non-existent talking to you, it doesn't make sense. So continue. Yep, okay. Just yell stop when you want me to stop. But more in an ethereal way. A lot of smart people don't believe in God. You really think that you're smarter than every non-believer in the world? You don't believe okay, in God. Okay, that's, that's a good one. That's a good one. Uh, when... First off, what what he's saying is true. It, it, it would be wrong for a Christian just to say, uh, you know, there are a lot of smart Christians out there. Do you really think you're you're, you're smarter than all Christians? That, that that's. But I think often when a Christian says it, it's in response to an atheist claim that all Christians are stupid. So uh, the Christian yep. is completely within their rights to point out that the greatest minds of Western civilization have almost uniformly been Christian. But I'll go further than that, as I always do, because amongst other things, this is a secular show and always has been, um, at least on this channel, um, which is that, um, oh, man, I just lost my place again. What were we saying? Uh, greatest Minds. Oh, 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 yes. I'm sorry. Not just Christians. Jews, uh, 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 non-Christian, non-religious people trained in Aristotle and Plato who were not Christians all believe there was a God, just like a majority of people do. And once you believe there's a prime mover, yeah. um, it changes how you see physicists, physics and it makes them make more sense. Um, so, yeah, it's not just Christians. In reality, it is fair to ask you, sir, why you think you're smarter than all the everybody else in the world. Uh, why don't you answer that? See, one of the snotty atheist jerkwad talking point questions is, well, there's 4,000 religions, and only yeah. yours is correct. Now, that's dishonest in more than one way, but we can flip it around and say, you think you're smarter than the people in all those other 4,000 religions? I don't think you are. But you act like you are because you're so hateful and obnoxious towards anybody who believes in the supernatural. Well, e even accepting their premise that there are 4,000 mutually exclusive options, then atheism... It's also a lie. A atheism would just be the 4,001st mutually exclusive option. So what are the chances you got that right? I mean, yeah. Right. It's more of them pretending that atheism is the default rational position. I'll yeah. repeat what I've said many times before. I got Hindu friends. I got Jew friends. I got totally non-religious theist friends. I got friends who are uh, don't believe in anything, but just understand that it's, uh, that it's normal to be religious because it's rational to be religious and it looks like it's healthy. Um, but <laughs> whatever. I say we do one or two more of these and we wrap it up because really no atheist is worth more than two minutes of our time. Okay, when, when he takes out the diagram, we'll call it quits, okay? When he does what? Continue. Okay.
pretty poorly recorded historical, if not entirely mythical figure whose birth year was guessed in order to serve as the basis of a calendar created by an Eastern European monk in 525, then tell me, how do we know what year it is? What the, uh, say so Yeah, sorry. well, first, um, no one, no one can parse that, okay? But uh, it seems a genetically cloned skeptic here is a Jesus mythicist, which means yep. he's completely credulous. He is completely credulous when it comes to conspiracy theories, like you see in Zeitgeist. Yep. Uh, no qualified academic scholar believes Jesus uh, uh, didn't exist, and and That's right. the fact the fact that he he so willingly believes uh, the conspiracy theories that say otherwise just shows what a complete farce his, his purported skepticism is. Yeah, he almost certainly is in with the, with the same cult network that involves the fraud Richard Carrier. Yes. And he credulously repeats these talking points. You notice, by the way, we can keep naming names and how these people quote each other and know each other. That's because they're a cult. And I'm not being yes. facetious. They're a cult, a cult network. There's competing cults within the atheism cult, but they're cultists with fake history and fake science and fake talking points, and it's all anti-Christian hate propaganda and anti-other religions too, primarily anti-Christian hate propaganda, but some other religions too. I mean, if, this, you know, if I were Muslim, I wouldn't trust any of these people. That's for sure. If I were Hindu, I wouldn't trust any of them either. Anyway, do we want to keep going? Yes. All right, here we go. I know God doesn't exist because the God delusion says so. Okay, I hate Christians who say they believe God exists because of the Bible, too. Yeah. Um, and that, 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 that's the Kem Ham set and, and a few others. I have never believed in God because of the Bible, and I don't think most people do. Catholics don't think that way. Eastern Orthodox Christians don't think that way. Anglicans don't think that way. Lutherans don't think that way. Presbyterians don't I think that way. <laughs> sorry. Point before. <laughs> I'm sorry. I know I keep saying I'm going to let you talk, you and I can't stop myself. Nuts. Where do you stop naming nuts? No, uh, uh, atheists get hung up on this fact that the Bible is not proof of itself, which is true. It's not proof of itself. But before you engage in a defense of the doctrine, you first need a doctrine to, to, to defend. Okay, and so, th so the Bible, both the, both the New and the Old Testaments, were, were aimed at people who were already believers. And so That's correct. Uh, it's, it wasn't... It wasn't these things were not written to convince unbelievers. So, so you can't hold that against it. In fact, one of the reasons the medieval monks used to, used to regularly debate atheism was to help the people who were so easily confused by atheism, because as been known for a long time, there's ample evidence for God. And in fact, skepticism favors the theist position. I can demonstrate that to anybody who wants to. Skepticism totally favors the idea that there's a God, yes. which is why you can use skepticism to destroy any atheist. I'm rambling again. Let's keep going, right? Yep. Okay. You don't believe in science? What horrible thing happened to you to make you feel that way? Screw you, you bigot. I'm so tired of hearing that. Go ahead, Rob. Uh, yeah, we don't, we don't like people who don't believe in science either. E even though uh, believe in science doesn't really mean anything, it's just something, it's just the kind of meaning, meaningless shit that stupid people say to make themselves sound smart. But yeah, yeah. I don't think there's anyone who doesn't believe in science. We gave you science, you bigot. And most of the best scientists alive today are still religious. Yes. Most and you have, fucking, you have fucking superhero uh, posters on your wall. But yeah, let, let's continue. Yep. You just choose to believe in God because you don't want to sin. Well, nothing's ever going to convince me that the word of Darwin is not true. If Once again, pretending that they own Darwin and they own evolution. I, I've actually, oh, I, I just, I just want to punch... And I don't mean that literally, but it's hard not to just want to say, oh, yeah. you jerk. You don't own Darwin. Who gave you permission to own Darwin? And who made? And what made you think that even Darwin was that important? You know, Christians had observed things like heredity and change over time for thousands of years. Yeah. Darwin depended heavily on, on the Catholic monk Mendel's work. Um, gen geneticists owe their work to the... I mean, their pretense that they own science is their most noxious and hateful yeah. trait. It really is. And smug and arrogant. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Continue. Okay, okay, okay. If God exists, how do you explain the beauty of a sunset? 
You don't believe in reciprocal altruism? Actually, you can't explain the beauty of, beauty of a sunset without some kind of supernatural. I'm sorry. Again, it, 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 does, it doesn't make sense when you flip it on its head. I, I, mean, I mean, the beauty of the world would be, would be evidence of design. It would not be evidence of non-design. So it doesn't make any sense. Exactly. All right, let's just do one or two more because this is getting painful. <laughs> Being naturally selected for among social species? And where do you get your morals from? You, you don't get your morals from anybody. You're, no. you're an atheist. You don't have any morals. Please yeah. refute me on that. You don't believe in morals. You're an atheist. I'll yeah. repeat it. You don't believe in, in morals, sir, because you are an atheist. Now, at best, they have like a set of behaviors that we're predisposed to, but it, it, doesn't, it doesn't prescribe anything morally. If we just choose to disobey uh, whatever they believe uh, evolution implanted on us, but yeah. I'll tell you what, I think we've gone long enough, actually. Um, no, keep, keep going, keep we're, going. we're coming to the 50-minute mark, but okay. That's a little too long for me, but all right. Know in your heart that God doesn't exist. Why are you denying reality? You think God exists? Now, who convinced you of that? The fool has said in his heart there is a God. You believe in God? Have fun not burning in hell. One day when you desperately need help, you'll reach out to science, and it'll be there to save you. And you'll realize it was there for you all along. Uh, shut, uh, shut up. Can you can uh, you believe just one straw man after another? Uh, I mean, some of those are emotional things people will say. They're, they're flipped around versions of emotional people. That, you know, people aren't that smart religiously will say. But this is just all so smarmy, snotty, shallow. Yeah. By the way, I've actually I've actually heard when he was parodying, uh, uh, you actually believe God exists? Who told you? I hear atheists use that all the time. So it's not really a parody. I, atheists do say, yeah, who, who, drew, who brainwashed you into thinking uh, God exists? All right, so, we've, gotten, we've gotten about, a, about two minutes into that video, and I think he's had enough. Although, if you want, we can come back and hit him some more. No, let, let, let's just do it. Let's just continue. Let's just plow forward. Rob, I really don't want to go much longer, okay? I don't want to finish this video. Okay, um, okay. We will go an hour and a half if we keep going at this rate. Um, let's do one or two more, but then we just really need to stop. <laughs> All right, let's Little see. Bonbons of atheist stupidity, yes. Yeah, exactly. You haven't read the one true word of reason. God is not great by Christopher Hitchens. You may believe... Christopher Hitchens is a plagiarist. His work can be shown to be full of fake, phony, historical citations. Um, and he can be proven to be a fraud, which you can't say about the Bible. So, uh, yeah. Even God now, but just wait until you're dead. Then you'll know the truth. Oh, you're no, way too. No, you won't if, if in, in atheism you'll just be dead, so you won't know anything. Yeah. Yeah, make, exactly. Doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Let's stop at the two minute mark. You'll disbelieve in God once you're older and more mature. Millions of people don't believe in God. You think all of them are wrong? This circle represents everything you know, and this circle represents everything that there is to know in the universe. Now, can you really say that God exists when you don't know everything? Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, see, this is the thing. Point out to you. The, the, the person who said you'll believe in God when you get older, statistically, two out of three atheists flip yes. out and, and leave atheism. Statistically, they do. Most atheists are male. Most atheists are young. Most of them are, 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 are white. Um, uh, and most of them grow out of it at some point in their lives. Only a few hardcore manage it. And the professionals have the longest lifespan. Um, of atheists, you know, you're getting paid to be atheist, son. What are you going to do if you have any doubts? Yeah. You're going to lose income, ain't you? If you start to doubt your atheism. Yes. Um, and it's normal to grow out of your atheism because atheism doesn't make any sense. By um, the way, I, I do want to make a claim about this last thing here, where he says uh, all all the other things you know, which. He, he doesn't seem to understand that there's there's a, a, a different kind of there's different. Uh, marking when you make a claim that something exists versus it doesn't exist. So that's right. All, all you need to say something exists is one reason, but to say something doesn't exist, uh, you'd either have to have some sort of a priori reason to believe that it can exist, or, or you'd have to do like an exhaustive search. Yeah, but but you yeah. can prove a negative. They'll like to claim that you can't prove a negative, but you can prove a negative all day. That's what, Obama, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Obama is not the president of the United States. Yeah. Neither is Richard Nixon. There well, are no Muslims in the U.S. Senate. I, I, you know, unless you posit secret ones. 
Well, that's what uh, I'm saying is, is that, yeah, you, you either have like an a priori reason, like that there are no married bachelors or, or, or an exhaustive search. Like you could, you could search all the members of the Senate to see there are no Muslims, but uh, yeah. So it, it's entirely fair to say, yeah, uh, unless you don't know everything, you may learn something later on that would show you that God exists. That's entirely fair. But if a person uh, wants to believe in God on the basis of even one fact, they don't need to know every other thing in the world. So, so it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and, and all of this isn't just a, an exercise in smugness. It's an exercise in abuse of religious people. Yeah. You know, people who are, 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 are religious and truly believe in their hearts will get abused by some of the crap that comes out of this guy's mouth and maybe even start to feel stupid and feel like they're dumb to believe what they believe anyway. Maybe they'll waver in their faith, but they won't know why. Um, and it's all just so condescending and nasty yeah. that really, I'm going to say it again, atheists are bullies. And yes, I mean you, you big fucking bully, genetically modified skeptic. And if you sit there and go, oh, but you're so mean, you're so nasty. I'm sorry, you really did start at first, bully. Your whole little cult movement is just nasty. And your fans are nasty. <laughs> you're shallow. Yes. I, and and not, not at all honest. You lack integrity, you lack morals, you lack ethics. Yes, that's you, genetically modified skeptic. No integrity, no morals, no ethics, because you're an atheist. You don't believe in those things. So there, you, you got any closing remarks? Well, we started out on the note of high dudgeon and we're closing on the note of high dudgeon. So there's a, there's a, we're bookended. It's kind of pleasingly symmetrical there. I'm channeling yeah. Christopher Hitchens with my Midwestern American accent and less <laughs> boo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, please subscribe to the Deflating Atheism channel. I want to mention again, I want to do a week in Atheist Stupid every week. If people want me to do takedown videos or us to do takedown videos, it's especially if you're fun, you'll come off, if you'll come uh, join us. But it's also cool if you will mark off no more than two minutes of Atheist Stupid in any one video, I'll take a crack for it. But you've got to tell me which two minutes to look at, and then I'll decide if it's worth my time from there. They're, they're like little hors d'oeuvres of atheist stupidity, yes. Yeah, because I, I really, I'm not going to sit through 40 minutes of atheist stupid. Find me the best, you know, the, 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 the most egregious stupid in any given atheist video. No more than two total minutes about it, and I'll rip it apart for you. I'll even bring you on the channel with me to do it with me. But, of course, in any case, tomorrow we're going to have uh, 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 John C. Wright, the science fiction author and newspaper man and lawyer, will be here to talk about his journey out of atheism again. Looks like uh, Dr. Steve Turley will be joining us on Thursday as we talk about the increasing post-secular era we appear to be moving into. So that should be fun. And we probably are going to be doing a response, a more detailed response to Godless Cranium, who, after all, has been deserving one for a few months. Oh, That'll probably Steve, be in the next week. Huh? Steve Turley is a good catch. Congratulations, man. Oh, he's a great, great guy too. I, I'm, I'm, I, I had a long, I had a cool. Uh, okay, I'm not going to keep bragging, but I can't, I can't wait to get him on the show. We're going to have fun, and uh, yeah, the post secular age that we're moving into. Atheists, you're going out. Thank God too. Uh, all right, everybody, subscribe to Rob's channel. After the stream here, I'll also put in links to everything we talked about. Please give us a like. Please give us a subscribe. Please give us your financial support, and uh, this is a growing movement. We're still looking for volunteers, too, so God bless everybody.